Hi, in this video I'm going to walk you through our integration between OnSupport and Stripe. This integration will allow you to generate a payment form just like this one you're seeing here and offer any of the payment methods you can see here. We have a lot of great options. You can see Google and Apple Pay, which are really big ones today. Then depending on where you live, you might want to look into offering, for example, ACH debit or SEPA debit, which are technologies that allow you to direct debit a customer bank account. And the fees are really much lower than credit card on this. Um, not only that, but when available, our integration also lets you recharge a customer's payment method. So you can do recurring payments or one-click offers in the future. Let's start by a little explanation of this feature. So in order to generate a payment module like this, we need to know what to charge the customer and for how much, right? Here, for example, it's a $1 product. So when we looked into where do we get this information from, we decided we will use something that is built into Entreport and that we can trust, invoices or rather transactions, but you cannot get the transaction ID easily in Entreport, while the last transaction merge field works like magic for this. And so we decided that in order to get the data for what to charge your customer, we will ask you to provide two things, a customer unique ID, so we know who is the customer, and an invoice ID. We'll talk about the token later. So now the question is, how do we get those? Well, you have three ways to get this invoice ID, which will get over one by one. The first way to get this is to generate an invoice using an Omtraport payment form and the dummy gateway. You would, of course, hide the payment fields in this scenario, but this is a great method because it lets you do all the things Omtraport lets you do, like bumps, discounts, taxes, and all of that. Then from that form, you just redirect your now cookied visitor to another page where you can now prefill your shortcode with a unique ID and last invoice number from the cookie. This will set the transaction to the status chosen within your module creation, as we'll see later, and it will then generate a payment module using that transaction data. Once paid, we'll move the transaction back to paid within the contact record. The main downside of this method is that you cannot use purchased product as a trigger because a fake transaction will also generate a purchase, even though it's just for a few seconds. So now for our second method, I won't go over it too much because this is documented elsewhere, uh, but you can also use our log transaction webhook to generate a transaction within the contact record. And then you send an email to your contact with a link to a page with the payment module. And that invoice ID and their unique ID in the URL, so you can merge them onto the shortcode. You also have our update transaction status shortcode. If you want to set that transaction to void it, for example, while you are waiting for the contact's actual payments. So that's method two. Uh, the third method is to use a template invoice within a test contact. Let me explain. If you sell a product for 10 bucks, then you will go into a contact. It has to be a test contact, right? And make sure to never delete this contact. Uh, you log a transaction manually, you write it off so it doesn't impact your accounting, and then you grab the invoice ID for that transaction, like this in the purchase history. This way, now that you have an invoice ID, you can actually art code the invoice ID directly within the shortcode, and it will always be the same cart, like the same transaction values, same product, same price. All you need to do now is get the actual contact unique ID in there, and that's it. In this scenario, once they pay, we will also log a transaction against the contact. This is the best method if you want to use purchase product as a trigger because we don't need to touch the transaction of the contact before he actually pays us. Okay, so to wrap this up on the module itself, once someone pays, we will always update the status field to success or failure, like it has to be a text field, and I advise you to clear this field once you are done with your automations. 
We will store a source token within the chosen field that will allow you to charge the payment method again. And then we'll either log or update the transaction within the compact. So that's how the module works. But to get there, you first need to create a module, right? So let's go through the steps. It's pretty easy and pretty quick at this point, if you have understood everything we discussed. Uh, first, we need to create a Stripe module by following the step two link. But first, you need to go into step one, follow the link in the documentation to generate a secret key. You will click here. And now that you have your publishable key and your secret key from this page, you can go into ClickFix and add them to your Stripe module. Pick your Entrap port key. Then we have two fields. The first one, we will store a secret key that will allow us to charge your customer's payment method again. In the second one, Stripe verification status, we will send success or failure depending on the transaction results. You can now choose your payment methods. Also, you need to make sure the method is activated within your Stripe account. Um, as a note, please be aware that in order to offer Apple payments, you will need to verify your domain by hosting a file on it. And you cannot do this with a site that is pointed at Entraport. So you'll either temporarily reroute your domain to get the verification done, or you use a subdomain for this. Now for the next field, if you use an invoice from within a test contact, then you will select leave as is. Otherwise, you know, write off or avoid the transaction is probably better. Uh, down below, the return URL is worth to some people after a successful payment. You pick a currency. And now, once you have saved this module, you get two tokens at the bottom. One is for the short code. It's for public token. And the second, you just copy-paste it for now. And we will take that to the next step. And within developers webhooks, we will add an endpoint right here. In there, you can paste your URL in the endpoint URL field. Also, you need to select some events to subscribe to by clicking here. And when that is done, you will be able to click Add Endpoints. You can find the list of events to listen to in the documentation right here on the step three. At this point, you're practically done. And you can now generate a payment module, which we discussed at length at the start of this video. Uh, we have also some CSS styling options that you can play with. So once you have this payment module, and if I pay here, my fields, they get updated, right? Looks like the field we picked in the module. And I'm now able to charge this token here, this uh, secret key, this contact, again and again. To do so, simply follow the instructions in step five. For the token, you have to use a private token, the one you added to Stripe Webhooks. Uh, do not use the module token. It won't work for this for safety reasons. Uh, the public token is you know, public. And that really closes this training video. If you have questions, do reach out on the Facebook group or via our website. We really want to improve this feature to fit your needs. So if you have suggestions or if you find a bug, please reach out to us. Happy day, Clixis family.